you know, I, I mean, listen, we all kind of bemoan the 70s and the loss sure. of that. I always say it's like, you know, if I went to Sony Pictures right now and pitched him a movie about a psychotic cab driver that saves a 12-year-old hooker from, you know, doom, <laughs> they'd throw me out. I mean, I'd be able to count the seconds before my ass hit the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but but that was a major studio release in 1976. It won the Palme right. d'Or, right. you know. So, it, so certainly the times have changed. And my problem is, is it so weighted to one way? Are we so now popcorn driven? Is the Avengers now going to reshape every? F- movie for the next 10 years? Is going to have to be. And listen, Marvel's doing it brilliantly. Right. They have figured out a way to make all these other films and then a super film of those films right. and have all of them be profitable and all the, and we know what's going to happen. Iron Man ain't going to die. Thor's not going to die. The Hulk's not going to die. You know, it's like right. we know these things and yet we still go in with this with this great sheer suspension of disbelief and we we buy in. Well, you know? I think you're you're right. I think that that the but the more it's just it, the more it's just um, a Marvel world, the more it's just a comic book world, the more that future film go or generations of film goers look at what movies are supposed to be. In other words, we grew up in a period You're where right. we were watching films like Taxi Driver and Serpico and Network and right. every all, all you know all the, the Men. Uh, yeah, you know, Last Tango yeah, in Paris. Conversation. You know, every, the conversation every conversation everything absolutely. was, you know, and and even if you look at something like the original taking of Pelham 1 2 3, Joseph Sargent's picture, mm-hmm. it's you know, which is designed just to be a thriller is like Filled with stuff, way Absolutely. more stuff than you would ordinarily find. Absolutely. I was going to talk to you about Hickey and Boggs, which I was wondering if you. Oh God, Hickey and Boggs, right, man, right, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's a Walter Hill. That's right, like a, first yeah, script. Yeah, oh and, my God, uh, and Culp directed that. Yeah, and that, you know, so pictures like that, I always think. I saw about. the new Beverly not that long ago. Hickey oh, did you Boggs. really? Yeah, oh, man. I would have loved to have yeah. seen projected. Yeah. Um, so those, and and you try, but and yet you continue to do it at least you know where you can. The Gray is a fairly big picture, obviously mm-hmm. successful, and yet you were able to do more than what. A lesser filmmaker would have said, "Ah, well, I don't need any of that dying stuff. We'll just fight." Wolves. Sure. So you were able to kind of punch that through. Do you feel like you can continue to do I, I that? I think kind I of? have to, Jack. I think if I don't, if I don't, if though, you know, like, listen, even something like the little three million dollars thing stretch. It's all about you know, like fate and coincidence and the choices you make and like. But it's in the guise of a comedy. It's a very broad right. comedy. Now, you know, does that interest me as much as like a movie like uh, like Killing Pablo, which I think is you know. Uh, you know, in a different way. And mm-hmm. I think I, you, you know, listen, at some point, you know, going back to what you said earlier, we're not going to make 43, 45, 50 films. You know, we're not part of that old contract, you know, right. uh, period in Hollywood. So we've got to be, you know, we've got to be, you know, I would say like, you know, Kubrick made 10 and eight of them are classics. You know right. what I mean? Right. So uh, that, I, I do. And it's, it, and maybe, you know, the, maybe the, 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 the answer is, no, do smaller films and do more of them because, you have the latitude creatively, and you and it's not this massive expenditure of time, and you can still get great stuff out of that, and keep yourself viable, and keep yourself vital in your work in the at the forefront. So I think whatever it is, it's going to have to be. I don't, I can't conceive of myself ever doing a studio picture again that doesn't that I don't write or have control over. Um, uh, you know, my brother and I pitched this thing, uh, Nemesis, Mark Millar, who's a kick-ass and wanton. We pitched this thing, and, and we had such what I thought was such a great, big twist, morality twist on this thing that I never thought in a million years they would go for it, and they did. Mm. Now, that's all fine and good in theory, but when we execute this thing, it is going to be a completely, it is going to be, it is, it's the opposite end of the spectrum of the whole comic book genre. It really is, mm-hmm. and it's like they're either going to go for that and see what it could be, and then maybe you move the form forward a little bit, um, or not. The, you know, when I like you see Ken Loach or Mike Lee or Cassavetti stuff, it's like you, you just feel these people, and I think we're losing that. We don't feel these people anymore. They're yeah. just, you know, they're just there. Right. They're there to emote these kind of very basic, prosaic kind of philosophies about love and life and death, right. and you know what I mean. Right. Right. But what f- good is that? Right. <laughs> you know well, what I mean. It doesn't last in your memory. And, no. And that's the tragedy, really. I mean, that's that's why. That's why your films have value because they resonate. Lacking that, you know, then what? Then what are you hanging out for? I'm always said like, you know, you watch Linklater, you watch Slacker, you could fall asleep in that film and still come away with that was a great movie. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, you, could, you know what I mean? It's like you could doze right. off, come back 20 right. minutes later, and it's still a great film. Right. Those, those are few and far between. I mean, you think it, it needs to engage you, at least for me, yeah. on a visceral level and draw you along. Um, 
or not. Right. You know, but if it's not doing that, and it's and it's and it's you know, then I then all, all the spectacle and all the wonderful visual effects in the world ain't gonna hold my attention. I've always said that. <laughs> lastly, is that that yeah, if you, even if you look at two of Spielberg's pictures, you look at Jaws and you look at, at uh, Jurassic Park, and one has obviously you know a painfully fake you know special effects shark, mm-hmm. and one has these at the time photorealistic dinosaurs, and yet. Jaws is filled with life because those people are real, and, real. You're, and you're absolutely invested. So yeah. you don't care about, you don't necessarily even care that the shark is fake. You don't care at all. You don't all, you, care. all you care is that you those the Quint is so real that when he's getting oh, eaten, dude. you don't give a shit. You don't get uh, yeah. You you lo- you love that guy. You love the guy. I, I, when I was know? a kid, I ate oyster crackers because Quint ate oyster crackers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that. I mean, you know, like. But what do you remember of that film? You remember the great scene with him and his kid? Give me a give us a kiss. Right. Why? Because oh, I yeah. need it. Yeah. Exactly. You know? And and him and, just pouring the red wine into the white. You know. Right. It's, it's like let's go cut this guy home. You remember <laughs> right, that? Those right. things like live and you know like farewell and adieu to you, right. fair and, Spanish lady. Right. I mean, it's fantastic. And you're right. That I wonder that that sensibility. That whatever that was, and maybe it's because Spielberg spent 168 days on Martha's Vineyard trying to like sharks broken, sharks broken. Right, you know? so he, he was forced to he actually forced deal to with like, it. But you, but you, when you imagine, I mean, imagine Jack having the luxury today, where you could have three actors spend six months around one another. What kind of shit would you get right, right. when it came time to shoot? It's funny because it seems like you do better in the business as a businessman if you're oily and immoral. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems like you do better, certainly in this time, uh, as a filmmaker if your stuff is not very complex, and yet you've been able to inject a heavy amount of real depth into what would otherwise be considered, you know, a right. genre, just genre material. Right. Um, Probably to my detriment. Well, it's certainly but see, to the but detriment of my bank account. Well, yeah, but see, but, but, it's, <laughs> but like, for example, the, you know, and I'm, you've been hearing this up the ass, but, you know, that's the reason why The Grey resonates is because it isn't what, I mean, people obviously went to see The Grey, and uh, half of that has to do with how it's marketed. Sure. Expecting Liam Neeson to fight wolves for right. two hours. Right. No one necessarily expected it to be an examination on death and what it is to die right. in all its different forms. It's, it's obvious where your concerns are. Right, of course. Um, and yet you're able to, and I think that goes back to Narc. It's funny because you, uh, you say you were, you know, you, when you were younger you were different, but I think you see that combination, that interest in oh, I life think and yeah. savagery. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think those are definitely bookend those two films have the most in common in terms of, you know, but they're also quote-unquote serious films. I don't know that that I'm going to ever get a break where I can make something like The A-Team or Smoking Ace because like, I think that you, you I think when you wander too far outside of whatever someone has preordained your wheelhouse to be, then you run into trouble. You know, mm-hmm. then it's like, well, I don't, what, are you, what are you doing? And yet, when it's done brilliantly, like the Coen brothers, you know, No Country for Old Men and Raising Arizona have almost nothing in common beyond the two guys that wrote and directed it. You right. know what I mean? Right. So I think that it, it is... For me, it's important to not simplify these things because then I feel like I'm not doing myself a service. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. There's nothing creatively that's that that I'm expending that's that, of any value to me. You know what I mean? You know, that's an interesting point. I I uh, I think you're right. I, I said this too about. Um, I think it's very easy to say. Well, someone like Bay, he just makes. You know, he just makes popcorn and that doesn't, you know, and somebody who works on something that has real depth of character or is character driven mm-hmm. is more valuable. I think it, I think it comes down, this is what you said, I think it comes down to who does what they, who is supposed to, Bay is supposed to do that. Exactly. That's who he is. That's who he is. Just, just, just like Spielberg is who He's, he is. Exactly. You know? He's being true to himself. Right. And I think that where, the, where you run into problems is if you've got a bunch of filmmakers who don't really listen to their own instincts. They just want to please what they think the marketplace Wants, and I think that's where you wind up in trouble unless you're one of those savants that can just kind of plug these things in, you know. And I don't right. necessarily know that I can do that. It's not, and, it, and it's funny. You always, you know, for all the, you know, you, you go on. There's it's all these. Everybody's a critic, you know. Everybody's got thoughts and op- opinions about your work, my work, whatever's work. And you realize these guys wouldn't last five minutes on a set. You know what I mean? It's right. like they have no idea what really goes into the making right. of these of these films and how much. Even the bad ones, man, require a load of work. Right. You no, know no, what that's I mean? the famous story that somebody sweat blood to make the shittiest movie you ever saw. <laughs> exactly. You know, like that's basically. Exactly. That's been, yeah, Ed Wood was killing himself right, he was. to make Glenn or Glenda. Yeah, the worst movie, you know? somebody killed themselves. Right. Uh, <laughs> your film fix. Subscribe to Cinefix.